right, we're back. <clears throat> More Kingdom Death Monster. I can't get enough. Uh, I'm really enjoying uh, Spudiculis so far. So we're gonna we're gonna go hunt again. Um, let me show you real quick who we're sending out, and then we'll just dive right into the hunt. Okay, the gear grids are gonna look very familiar from the last showdown with the butcher because basically kept it all the same, and we didn't buy anything new. The setup seemed to work pretty good, so we're gonna go with it. But <clears throat> first, we're sending out Jadis. Uh, who has two insanity. This, you know, insanity is super important for the Spudiculis, so I'm trying to send out as many people as possible with insanity. Uh, so Jadis has the double dash, plus one strength, plus one evasion. We're sending her out with Bone Axe, Claw Head Arrow, Cat Gut Bow, Cat Eye Circlet, Monster Grease, um, and that's her mini. Then Mrs. Beaver is going out, plus two strength, plus one evasion. She's the only one that's going out without insanity, so that's a little bit sketch, but... Uh, this is the mini we're using. We're sending bone darts, bandages, cloth, and bone axe. Uh, next we're sending out Lucy yet again with the twilight sword and six insanity. Uh, we're sending her out with everything we saw before plus the twilight sword. Um, so that'll be good. We're going to try to get at least one hit with the twilight sword and then we'll switch over to the Qatar after that. Um, and I forgot to change her Qatar weapon proficiency over to the twilight sword. Um, but uh, this is her mini. Okay, and then finally, Corin. We're sending them out again. Plus one accuracy, plus one strength, plus one evasion. Uh, and I just realized that they have, they cannot have stinky gear, so I'll switch over the monster grease. But we're sending him out with the uh, skull helm, cloth, bone axe, founding stone, bandages, and I'll get that monster grease moved over. Uh, so Mrs. Beaver will take that one. Okay, so. Let's randomly shuffle our hunt events and put them out. Two Spedicules, two randoms, another Spedicules, and then the Forest Gate if we ever get that far. But with that, uh, Jadis is going to be our first event revealer. Bad vibrations. The air around the survivor suddenly feels strange. A metallic uh, cackling becomes audible all around them. The survivors are unable to identify its source, but are certain that they are being watched. The event revealer rolls a d10. His, if the result is even, set up the showdown with star spiralings adjacent to the silk nest. If the result is odd, move the spedicules one space backwards on the hunt event board. Okay. Even. Okay, so we're going to set up a spider. Let me just set this on there to remind me. Yep, so we'll set up one spider um, adjacent to the silk desk. Okay. All right, Jadis is done. Mrs. Beaver is gonna be our next event revealer. The way is narrow. The survivors walk between two cliffs that narrow until everyone is forced to walk single file. At some point, the survivors in front realize the last in line has disappeared. Let's uh, let's roll a d10 for each one. So Jadis gets 10, Mrs. Beaver, that's cocked, four, Lucy, six, and Corn is seven. So Mrs. Beaver is the lowest. They become the straggler. Remove the straggler from the rest of the hunt phase. They gain a bleed token. Great. If the survivors return to the settlement before fighting Spidicules, the straggler is dead. Otherwise, the straggler starts the showdown knocked down adjacent to the monster. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> so there's two things we have to remember. Um, wow, these, these are really interesting. Uh, okay. So now, Lucy is going to be our event revealer. And we're going to do a random hunt event. Random hunt event tables. Where, where could they be? There we go. All right. Uh, I don't have my white one around, so this one will be tens. 42. 42. 42. Surgeon. 
creaky carriage approaches the survivors, richly appointed in red and gold. The carriage is carved on every side with lurid faces. A massive twitching eye adorns the front, while the door of the carriage is waiting, open mouth. Out of the small window, a gnarled hand beckons. One survivor with three plus courage may choose to enter the wagon. They remove one impairment or severe injury and gain one random disorder. We don't have courage, so beautiful. Best hunt ever, kind of. <laughs> we, we add a spider uh, immediately and we put Mrs. Beaver knocked down next to Spedicules. So uh, great, I, I went ahead and pre-rolled a train. We got a bug patch and a toppled pillar. So I'll go ahead and get everything set up and then we'll uh, we'll dive in. <sighs> All right, showdown time. So I've set it up um, as per our hunt events. I put a spiderling uh, next to Spedicules. I didn't say where, just adjacent. So I put him on the far side to, to give us maybe one extra turn where it'll, it'll be walking around towards us. Um, and then I put Mrs. Beaver next to Spedicules. I put him closest to our survivors as possible. Um, so that and, and uh, Miss Beaver has one bleed token at this point. Um, and I realized while well, with editing the last couple Spidicules um, uh, uh, episodes is I've been playing the egg sacs wrong. Uh, when we burst them, we're supposed to put a, put a spiderling there. So we're gonna have to remember that rule. I'll probably forget it, but uh, we'll, I'll try to remember it. Um, but with that, uh, I've built my AI deck. Uh, nine basic and four advanced, so that's ten wounds on on, on Spedicules. And I've noticed that all the advanced cards are mood cards, which is, that's interesting. And then hit location, mix those up real quick before we dive in. All right, so hopefully, hopefully this will work out for our advantage. Um, but Spedicules goes first. Uh, so we've got frantic spinning um, on uh, to start out with. So when this comes into play, okay, survivors cannot spin movement as long as one or more spiderlings are adjacent to them. So we'll have to remember that. Then we have twitching leg pile. We've got reflection, so I can't see anything. We got spawn, um, and we've got the spiderling actions as our special cards for level one spidercules. So uh, with that, it's the uh, spider spidercules' turn first. And we're gonna do pulverize, closest threat facing in range. Okay, so we're gonna move and attack. So we're just gonna go right here. And we're gonna attack Lucy. Um, okay. And we're gonna do speed two. It's on a two plus, three plus, four plus, five plus. Okay, so that's two hits. Um, to the head and the, and the chest two damage each so let's spend a survival to dodge one we do spend it so we're down to five survival and we're gonna we're gonna take the chest so we'll go down to zero for the chest and we'll dodge the head okay and then um, after damage we perform spawn Tarbrick suffers batch and bash and knockback five so spawn goes here he gets bashed and knockback back five Turn to face away from the target and full move forward. Then turn to face most survivors. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think it stops on an obstacle. I'm not sure though. So let me let me look at the rules for that. Monster move monster movement with obstacles. So I don't run into them very often. I put it there specifically so it couldn't run away. Um, but I can't remember the rules now. Okay, so I believe it, it ignores the terrain. So uh, that was a mistake on my part. So it would be half on the train, half off the train. Okay. So now it's our turn. I believe that Miss Beaver would stand up because it's the end of the next monster's turn. Um, and then Oh, this was Lucy that got knocked down. Whoops, I knocked down the wrong person. Uh, okay, so now let's have... Hmm. Oh, shoot. Uh, it's not... So we're get, we have the spiderling action we forgot to do. So their movement is four. So one, two, three, four. 
Uh, and then the other one's gonna stay right there and attack speed one, hits on a four plus. This is Miss Beaver, four plus, five plus, six plus, five. So no hits, okay. So that's the spiderling's actions. Now it's our turn. I keep forgetting about the spiderling actions as well, so I have to be careful of that. Okay. So I think. So I think Mrs. Beaver is going to attack a spiderling with her bone axe. Speed two is on a six plus. Ugh, five and a four, nothing. <laughs> uh, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Jadis would have to dash up. Um, hmm. Oh, here we go. Oh, Mrs. Beaver already went. Shoot. And she has the bone darts. Lucy's knocked over. I think we're going to leave Lucy knocked over. Corin. One, two, three, four, five. So he would have to dash to get to the spiderlings as well. So Mrs. Beaver actually is going to do this. One, two, three, four, five. She's gonna pull back. Okay, I think maybe we'll use the cat eye circle with Jadis. Reveal the next three monster hit locations. So let's look at those. And put them back in any order. So twitching, uh, tricky four legs, segmented torchander, and forehead stock. Okay. So let's do. Tricky four legs on top, then four head stock, then segmented torchander. So none of them are trashed, which is good. Okay, so that's, um, oh, let's do rawhide. Oh, I don't think we can rawhide headband if we're knocked over. Yeah, we can't spend activations if we're knocked over. Shoot. Uh, okay, well, I guess that's the end of our turn. So let's draw another AI card. Fling, furthest threat facing in range. One, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so that's gonna be that's gonna be Corin. Okay, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. Perform spawn, but place the spiraling in an unoccupied space adjacent to the target. If possible, place the spiraling between target and Spidercules. So it flings the spider, I guess. <laughs> Lands right next to Corin. We'll move Spike Lays away from all threats, then turn to face the most survivors. Oh my gosh. So it goes uh, here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh man. Well, this is bad. So Lucy gets up. Oh no, now the spiderlings go. So this one wouldn't go up. So one spiderling would attack Corin. That's going to be four plus, five plus, eight. So that's a hit to the arms. So that's a light, one damage, right? Yeah, light to the arms. Okay, then we're going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, all right. So I can't attack. Well... <laughs> this is difficult. Okay, so now Lucy gets up. So I think we're going to have a spiderling attack round just because because Spidercules is so far away. So Corn's going to attack Bone Axe. <sighs> Nothing, right? Um, what's the strength on toughness is 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Oh, one hit. Okay, so dead spiderling okay oh no that's one hit and then we have to wound okay so now oh no sorry i completely messed that up <laughs> take that back <laughs> six plus five plus with accuracy to wound we added a four and a three or something so no nothing all right great that's corin's turn um, and then let's see here. Let's have. Oh no, that was yeah. That's Corin's turn. Then we have Mrs. Beaver move here. Attack. It's one hit, and then it's a eight, seven, six, five, four, three plus eight. 
Alright, so that's one dead spiderling. Damn, that's Mrs. Beaver's turn. Alright, so Lucy's gonna move up. She's going to attack with her hooded discreptar. Seven plus to hit. Two misses. And then Jadis is going to. Let's just move up. One, two, three, right here. Bone axe. Two hits. And that's eight, seven, six, five, four. Four plus. Nope. Yes. Okay, so Spiderling dead. Okay, that's all of our turns. Boy, Spidercules is being ridiculous today. Maybe we should call him Spidiculus, because he's ridiculous. <laughs> that was a bad joke. Okay, AI turn. AI card. Jumping spiders, mood. When this comes into play, discard all other moods, so frantic spinning goes away, and perform basic action. So we're going to perform basic action here in a minute. While this is in play, Spiderlings gain plus four movement. I never had that one before. That is bad. Four movements, and they have eight movement total. That's bad. Okay, basic action. Closest threat facing in range, closest survivor in field of view. So we're going to move and attack. So we're going to go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I guess. And then that's it. We're out of range. So at least it's coming towards us again. All right, there's still no way. One, two, three, four, five of us getting to them. So I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, they're in. He's he'll be in range next time. Uh, okay, so yeah, um, we're gonna do spiderling action now. So spiderling is gonna attack Lucy. For um, I should probably just put this here. Four plus, five plus, six plus, seven plus, seven plus. Miss. Okay, good. All right, now the spiderlings are done. So now our turn. So what we're gonna do? Jeez, one, two, three, four, five, six. Nope, not anywhere close. So let's have Lucy attack Spiderling. One hit. Um, we're gonna eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Three plus. That's enough. I'll take it. Spiderling down. Lucy's turn is done. Okay, should she move? Let's go here. One, two, three, four. Okay, then we're gonna go here. So we hope it ends up here or here. That'll be within range. So Jadis will search an egg sack. So we get immediately get a web silk. Okay. And then we destroy this terrain. Place the spider there. Then what do we do? Then we roll a d10. Eight. Spiderling that emerges is a deformed mess that dies in seconds. Remove it from the showdown board and gain plus two insanity. Yes. Okay. Two more insanities for a four. If I can find it on the dice. There we go. Okay. Good. So that's Jadis' turn. Now Mrs. Beaver. I think we're gonna have Mrs. Beaver go one, two, three, four. And she's gonna do the same, so this is gonna explode. Spider's gonna go here, we gain a web silk. Okay, roll a d10, seven. Um, you have attracted unwanted attention to your scale. You've gained the priority target token. That's not good. Okay. All right, so that's Mrs. Beaver's turn. And then Corrin's going to come up and hopefully take out 
this um, spiderling. So Corrin's gonna attack Bonax, speed two. So that's six plus, five plus because of our accuracy. Two hits, so I had to wound. Eight, seven, six, five, four. 10, perfect. Done. Okay, that's everybody's turn. I wonder if we should dash. Yeah, let's let's have Mrs. Beaver spend her last survival and dash. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. Four, five, six. Let's go right here. Oh man, I don't know. So where was she? Here. Hmm. One, two, three, four. Right here maybe. Let's go here. So then it'll come down and be right here. Hopefully, if there's no like spinning thing, we're still in range. Okay. So she spent her last survival to dash. Okay. All right. Spedicules' turn. Another mood, feeding time. When this comes into play, discard all other moods and perform basic actions. So jumping spiders goes away. While this is in play, spiderling's action gains the attack profile after damage. Full move the spiderling directly away from Spedicules. Target suffers grab. Oh. Oh, man, that's not good. Feeding time. I'm just going to try to drag him away to eat him. That's great. Okay. So I think we have to be targeted with the attack to lose the priority target token. So I still think we have the priority target token. Oh, but we're going to basic action. So here we go. We're going to go here. Or should we go here? Let's go there. Speed two. It's on a two plus. Um, and we're targeting uh, Mrs. Beaver. So it's two plus, three plus, four plus. Two hits to the head and chest for one damage each. She does not have anything, so we have to take it. So we're immediately a heavy, so we get knocked down. Our target token goes away to the head, and the other one is the chest, so that goes down to a light. All right. Our turn now. Um, I think Lucy's gonna spend a survival. She spends it, so she goes down to four, encourages Mrs. Beaver. And then we're going to attack. So we're gonna move here. And we're going to attack with Lucy. Speed two hits on a um, seven plus, a six plus because we're in the blind spot. That's one hit to the Tricky four legs, which we knew about. We just have to wound and it'll add to the twitching leg pile. So let's do that. Um, so we we are gonna wound on an eight, seven, six, five, four, three plus. Oh shoot, that's a wound. Uh, I forgot I was supposed to attack with the um, Twilight Sword to get that proficiency and I forgot to do that, but that's okay. We'll do it next time. There'll be Plenty more rounds, I think. So that's Lucy's turn. Um, we're gonna have Mrs. Beaver attack. Let's not go in the blind spot. Um, so we're gonna attack speed two. Uh, it's on a six plus. Oh, that's cocked. That's a perfect hit. So that doesn't matter. So hit location is the forehead stock. <laughs> Mrs. Beaver's gonna gain the priority target token. Um, all spiderlings perform spiderling action, targeting the attacker one at a time. Okay, here we go. So it's gonna be uh, eight, seven, six, five, four, three plus. Nine, so that's a wound for sure. We don't crit on a nine, I believe. Nope, so there's that. Uh, so the reflex, uh, we get a priority target token. And all spiderlings, perform spiraling action. There's no spiraling, so nothing happens. Okay. All right, um, and then we're gonna have Jadis attack with a claw head arrow, which we should have done first. Speed one, hits on a six plus. Come on, eight. There we go, so we get minus one evasion token immediately. 
Okay. And then we pull our hit location. This is the segmented torch ander. If we wound, we're going to perform spawn, and uh, it's going to it's going to raise up, so we can't hit it. Perform spawn, and then full move all spiderlings toward the attacker. So okay, here we go. So we're going to hit on a um, what's our difficulty again? Uh, eight, uh, two, one. Anything but a one. Three. That'll do it. Let's wound. Um, so now it performs spawn, and then it full moves towards the target. So we'll put it right here. All right. Okay, so that's Jadis's turn now. Mrs. Beaver's turn is done. We have Corin. Corin, we don't want to get drug away, so we're going to attack Spiderling. Uh, speed two, it's on a six plus, five plus because of the evasion. Oh yeah, two hits. Okay, and then um, it's going to be uh, eight, seven, six, five, four plus. That's do that'll do it. Spiderling down. Got to really take care of these spiderlings because we do not want to get dragged away. Okay, so that's everybody's turn. Is there anything else we want to do here? I don't think so at this point. So let's draw an AI card first. Spiderkiles. Feed, Survivor in Blind Spot. It's going to be Lucy. Uh, so speed two. It's on a two plus. Oh no. And then we're going to full move away. So hopefully we can dodge. We only do one attack and we can dodge it, hopefully. So here we go. Two plus, three plus, four plus, five plus. Come on. Yeah, two misses. Twos and twos. So if the attack dealt damage, perform spawn twice. It did not do damage. So we just discard it. We do spiderling action. There's no spiderlings. All right, so how many wounds do we have left here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven wounds left. Okay, our turn again. Um, oh shoot, we should have, we should have attacked, we should have attacked um, Mrs. Beaver, but it was still twos, which wouldn't have hit no matter what. So. Priority target would have been gone. I'm sorry about that. I forgot about the priority target token. So it wouldn't have attacked Lucy, it would attack Mrs. Beaver, but it's still two twos, so it still misses no matter what. Okay, uh, our turn. Um, Lucy's going to attack again with a hooded scrap guitar. It's B2, six plus. Two misses. And then they're gonna move back to right there. Okay, uh, so that's Lucy's turn. Then we're gonna um, we're gonna have Mrs. Beaver attack from right there. Six plus, two hits. I wish I could roll those on my hits. All right, so tricky four legs and the segmented abdomen. So tricky four legs. Uh, we're gonna add to the twitching leg pile. Segmented abdomen. Uh, if we were here with a spear, we'd have plus three strength. Full move the spiky leads away from all threats. Cancel all hits and out of range. Okay, full move spider links toward the attacker. So we're gonna do tricky four legs first obviously. All right, so Lucy hits on an eight, or no, um, Mrs. Beaver, eight, seven, six, five, four, three plus. That's a wound. Tricky four legs goes in the twitching leg pile. We got a minus one movement token. Okay. Oh, and I forgot about the evasion too. Um, well, that's okay. It didn't matter. Uh, now segmented abdomen, uh, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three plus. Seven, that's another wound. So let's shuffle up our AI deck because we're out of cards and deal a wound. Then full move the spider killies away from all threats. So it's 10. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Full move all spiderlings towards the attacker. There's no spiderlings. Spiderling action happened. Is that everybody? Oh no, Mrs. Beaver went. So now let's have, oh yeah, Clawhead Arrow hit, right? Okay, let's have Jadis, um, one, two, three, four, right here. And she's gonna search the Silk Nest, hope for that plus one population. So uh, place the spiraling in the free space nearest to the survivor. <coughs> okay, so we place a spiderling, boop. Okay, then we roll a d10. Come on, 
eight to nine, eight to nine. Nine, plus one population. Beautiful, so let's find our thing here. And I don't have a pen, I'm gonna grab a pen. All right, we gain a population, beautiful. All right, so we're gonna do a male. Male, do egg sack. And then we'll call this male. Emeth, Emeth. Do we have Emeth yet? No. Emeth. All right, lantern year five. Beautiful. Okay, that's Janus's turn. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have one, two, three, four. We're gonna have corn come up, attack that spiderling. So we're gonna hit on a six plus, two hits. Uh, we're gonna wound on an eight. Uh, oh, it would actually have been five plus, but eight. So six, five, four, four. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Wait, eight, seven, six, five, four. You have four plus. Shoot. Uh, so uh, then let's do, let's have Corin just dash out of the way. Uh, one, two, three. And then we'll have Mrs. Beaver move in and she'll attack speed two. Did Mrs. Beaver go already? Uh, I think she did. So let's move back. It's not gonna matter. So let's give, Corn his survival survival. Shoot. Okay, I think that's everybody's turn. Oh no, I can't remember if Mrs. Beaver. Oh yeah, Mrs. Beaver did the the two attacks, so okay. Alright, so AI card. Frantic spinning. Good. Yes. The feeding time goes away, which I really like that. Okay, so we're gonna do a basic action. But then we can't move, you spend movement if we're next to a spiderling. So it's 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we're going to attack Lucy. Speed 2 hits on a 2 plus, 3 plus, 4 plus, 5 plus. 1 and a 7. So that's one hit for one damage to the chest. So we're going to take it. Oh, that's going to be a light. Let's spend a survival so we can dodge it. Spin the survival, and we're gonna dodge it. Okay, that's done. Spiderling action now. Spiderling is gonna attack one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. So we're gonna attack Corin. Uh, speed one. It's on a four plus, five plus, five plus. One, nothing. Good. Okay, our turn now. So let's have. So have Jadis attack a spiderling with her bone axe. Six plus, five plus, one hit. Uh, eight, seven, six by four, four plus, six dead spiderling. Okay. Now we're gonna have, so that's Jadis' turn. We're gonna have Lucy attack. Should we attack with the Twilight Sword? Let's do it. So accuracy is nine minus the Twilight Source proficiency level. So we have zero proficiency, so it's nine. Uh, eight because of the evasion, so eight plus. Nine. Yes, it's a hit. So we gain a proficiency level with the, the uh, Twilight Sword. Uh, hold on. Okay, game proficiency level, which it doesn't come into play until after we finish this, but I'm gonna mark it down because I'll forget. All right, so we hit on the auxiliary eyes. Okay. Spike these plunges to the ground with surprising speed. All survivors adjacent to the monster, including those in the blind spots, so for bash knockback five. Okay. All right, so um, we are going to hit now. Twilight Sword has nine, so anything but a one. <laughs> a wound. Okay, so. We said we're knock back five. So I think we go one, and then I think we stop there, and Janus gets knocked down. 
then we'll perform spawn. So we'll spawn right here. Oh goodness, 3D board does not like to keep players right there. Okay. Oops. Well, that was not not so good. It's Lucy's turn. So I think what we're gonna do, Mrs. Beaver. Yeah, one, two, three. She's gonna come in. We'll go with blind spot four. Speed two. Uh, hits on a six plus, five plus. Two hits. Cunning four legs and the segmented knee joint. Okay, the segmented knee joint has the spedicules move away. Okay, and then the cunning four legs is kind of the same though. Um, I don't think. Let's do the segmented knee joint because the other one's a bash and knockback five. So let's just do segmented knee joint. Okay, so we're gonna hit on an eight. Um, seven, six, five, four, three, three plus. Crit. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, there's no crit. So uh, that's another wound. Now the cunning four legs, uh, three plus, two. <laughs> All right, so we suffer bash and knockback five. One, two, three, four, five. So we're bashed now. Great. So I was going to use Corin to attack that Spiderling. But if we do, then it's going to go, it's going to move over everybody. So let's have Corin. Okay, that's a failure. Uh, so I'm going to have Corin actually move here. So it's going to be. Corrin's now going to attack speed 2, uh, 6 plus, 5 plus, 4 plus because our plus 1 accuracy. Just one hit. Cutting 4 legs. Alright, so 8, 7, 6, 5, 4 plus to wound. 9. Okay, so we wound. We add to the twitching leg pile. Add a wound. Minus 1 movement. So we're we're at uh, 11, 10, 9 movement now. Okay, that's everybody's turn. All right, so we're down to three wounds on Spidecules. I think we're doing... I'm not going to say it, because half of our team is knocked down right now. All right, AI. Feed. Survivor in blind spot. Nope, close survivor facing in range. Okay, so it's going to be... It's going to be Corin. Speed 2. Oh no, it's on a 2 plus, 3 plus, so 3 plus. Oh, I'm getting such lucky rolls. 1 and a 2, because it would have moved away, grabbed, and then um, done spawn twice. Corn would have got the priority target token, but nothing happened. So we have two AI cards left, so three wounds total. So we have feed and feeding time. So we want to get rid of feeding time, um, but we just want to kill him no matter what. So, okay. So there's we mixed up. Uh, everybody stands up because it's the end of the monster. Oh no 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 wait wait wait. Uh, so we go one. No, no hold on. Let's see here. Closest threat in range. One two three four five. Okay. Spiderling moves here. Attack speed one. It's on a four plus five plus one. So nothing. Okay. Now it's our turn. Now everyone stands up. Doop, doop. Okay, so I think what we want to do is we just want to go for broke. We're at three wounds. We're there's a possibility that we can just end it this round. So let's see what happens. So let's let's start here. One, two, three. We'll go right there. We're gonna have Lucy attack for two. Back. We're switching back to the hood scrap guitar because we've already done our Twilight Sword wound um, attack. So uh, okay. So here we go. So uh, seven plus, six plus, five plus. That's two hits. Segmented jaw and segmented ear. So segmented ear is a failure. Perform basic action. Segmented jaw wound. Uh, Speculates emits a bizarre call. Full move all spiderlings toward the attacker. Full move speculates away. So we want to do segmented ears first. All right. So we're going to hit on a eight, seven, six, five, four, three, three plus. 
four. That'll do it. That's one wound. Okay, so we don't do failure. Segmented jaw now. So three plus. Crit. That's a wound, and we crit. So the reaction doesn't wound reaction doesn't happen. All non-death insane survivors gain one survival. Oh, and oh dang it, it's it's not that bone axe. I thought uh, savage, uh, but we don't have savage with the with the scrap guitar. All non-death insane survivors gain plus one survival. Insane, insane, not insane, insane. So we so corn gains a survival. Lucy gains a survival. And Jadis gains a survival, but Mrs. Beaver does not. The attacker gains one serrated fang spite Achilles resource. Ooh, cool. Serrated fang. I don't think I've ever got that one before. Serrated fangs. Okay, and that was Lucy. Awesome. Good. Okay, that was Lucy's turn. Let's end it. What's our best? Uh, Mrs. Beaver has the best possibilities one two three four five so she's gonna move up here you know what one two three four five let's not let's play it safe let's have um corin go speed two it's on a six plus because if we get too bunched up we're, we're asking for trouble so um six plus five plus four plus one hit that's all we need not a trap not a trap super dense oh, dang it so I think we can uh, wound on it, but afterwards we're gonna lose our bone axe. So here we go, segmented sternum. There's a reflex, we're gonna suffer bash, but um, let's do it. So eight, seven, six, five, four, yep, four plus to kill, eight. All right, so that happens. We lose the bone axe, unfortunately, because it's a frail item. But the Spidicules, the Spidicules, Spidicules is defeated. Sorry, I had a sneeze and I thought I had another one. Awesome, great, yay. Uh, okay, so let's do, uh, oops, we don't need this, we need this. So victory, yay. Okay, so we gain um, oh no. Rewards. The settlement gains a silk refining innovation. When a survivor defeats the speculates, they suffer its revenge. If Kaken is already anywhere on the timeline, trigger it now. Okay. Trigger it now. Otherwise, nominate a victorious survivor and remove them from the settlement. They are kidnapped by the vengeful speculates. Add Taken. Survivor's name to the timeline four years from now. Okay, so we do Taken now, because we do, we have, who is Taken? Put him in the front, Burn, Burn is Taken. So let's do Taken. This is interesting, I've never done this before, so this is new, Taken, here we go. This event was triggered during the showdown phase. Nominate the survivor whose name is next to Taken in the timeline, then erase the event, okay? Burn. So we erase the event now. Oh, I put it in pen, so good job. Mark it out. Okay, now we roll a d10, it looks like. Oh no. One. A botch rescue. The nominated survivor suffers the dismembered arm severe injury and is returned to the settlement. Nominate a returning survivor and move them from the settlement. Burn has a reroll, so we're going to use their reroll. Here we go, let's try again. Nine, that's better. A daring rescue, the nominated survivor is returned to the settlement and gains plus two courage and plus two understanding. Beautiful. Plus two courage, plus two understanding, which that triggers insight. Um, does Spidicules replace insight with anything? Doesn't look like it. So now let's, let's go ahead and trigger insight right now. Before we forget, then we'll finish up the uh, the victory insight. Okay, so we did this during the showdown phase. We do epiphany. Uh, we get analyze. 
Look at the top AI card and return it to the top of the deck. Okay, so hold on. Watching the chaotic movements of monsters, you perceive a pattern. Perhaps its motiva motives are not so different from your own. You can imagine yourself in the monster's place. Gain the following ability and roll on the table below. At the start of the survivor's turn, if you are adjacent to the monster, reveal top AI card, then put it back on the top of the deck. Okay, so I'm going to put this down here. Analyze. Um, start. Turn. Next. Two? Question mark. Look at top AI card. Cool. Okay. Good. Yay. Burn is returned. Burn returned. And he got inside. Oh, and we need to roll a d10. So we got an analyzed during the showdown phase. Yep. Okay. So here we go. Roll a d10. It's eight. Gain one plus one permanent accuracy. Awesome. Well, I forgot. Burn is pretty ridiculous right now. He's got six movement, plus one strength, plus one evasion. He's got Rageaholic, Secretive. Um, so I don't think he's a returning survivor this time around, but cool. Okay. Now let's do the rest of the showdown rewards. Okay. We have four basic, four Spedicules resources. Here we go. Um, all right, here we go. So one, two, three, four. In case we get spinets, we get chitin, exoskeleton, and large appendage. Okay, and then four basic resources. One, two, three, four. We get monster bone. We need hide, monster hide. There we go. Broken Lantern, eh, and Monster Organ. Cool. Solomon has innovated Scarification and defeated level three Spedicules. We haven't. We've got Stroke Refining already. Cool. All right. We are victorious against Spedicules again. Oh, and we also got the Segmented Fangs, two Web Silks. That was a pretty good haul, all things considering. Um, no one got permanently wounded we didn't have to spend any uh um founding stones so great uh let me set up the showdown phase decide what i want to do and i'll be right back <sighs> okay <laughs> this might go drastically different depending on what happens with uh, a parade of ghosts which i have no clue what's going on uh, with that what's going to happen i've got it pulled up on my computer so i can read it i haven't read ahead i want to be a spoiler free as possible uh, going into this. So Armored Strangers I have dealt with before. It's not gonna be good, not going to be good. Um, but with that, uh, we return. Um, and uh, Mrs. Beaver ages, so let's trigger age real quick. So she's gonna age, she can now do weapon proficiency and we roll uh, 2d10, 9, 10, 11, 12. So again, a random fighting art. Shuffle them up and then roll a d10 because we don't want to spoil ourselves by seeing a black and white <laughs> uh, Drifter Knight um, card on top. So here we go. Nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Double dash. Again, I've gotten double dash a bunch. Um, okay, well, here we go. Miss Beaver gets double dash. So turn an activation into move. Okay. All right. Not the greatest, but that's okay. All right. So now uh, we gain endeavors. We gain four endeavors because we had four returning survivors. We update the timeline. So now we're in lantern year six. Uh, we're going to do a settlement event now first before we do Armored Strangers and a Parade of Ghosts. So here we go. Six, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, come on. Good one. Skull Eater. Oh, no. I don't believe this is a good one. I 
very rarely gotten it, but I believe it's not good. Randomly choose a returning survivor and give them plus three insanity. If there are no returning survivors, choose a survivor from the settlement, gain plus three insanity. Okay. Jadis is one, two. Mrs. Beaver is three, four. Lucy's five, six. Corrin, seven, eight. Uh, Reroll. Seven. So, uh, Corrin. We gain three insanity. So we go to eight insanity. Okay. The survivor consumes the skull of a deceased survivor. They awaken a hunger that cannot be stopped and roll on the table below. They gain the following impairment. Morrow hunger. Okay. That's amazing. Okay. Uh, murder, which is a horrible settlement event. Skull eater. Nominate. So it says, uh, when a murder or skull eater settlement events are drawn, this survivor is nominated. It's not too bad. Uh, we'll just have to make sure. Unfortunately, he's the plus one accuracy. Oh, man, and he's almost specialist in axe. Great. Delicious skulls. Roll 1d10. 10. The skull eater may cure themselves. They lose all survival and insanity and skip the next hunt to remove the morrow hunger impairment. If they don't, add murder settlement event to the uh, event to the timeline next year. Uh, that one's an easy, easy one. We're going to get rid of Morrow Hunger. We're going to get rid of all of our insanity and all our survival. So we get rid of eight insanity and one survival. <sighs> okay, skip the next hunt. Whew, that was good. Very, very good. Uh, okay, Skull Eater is done. Whew, that could have been real bad. We do not want murder because Lucy would be the one that was murdered because she has the most hunt experience. Ooh. Okay, so now we do Armored Strangers. <sighs> You're visiting, visited by enigmatic figures, fully enclosed in armor. They match, march silently through the settlement. The only noise is a metallic clang as they pause before each survivor and tap their lantern halberds against the ground. The survivors have no choice but to helplessly await their mute deliberations. Add Kingsman to the Nemesis encounter list. The strangers count people and take action based on the population total. So we add the Kingsman to the Nemesis monsters. Uh, we faced a level one butcher, so we need to check that off. Um, okay, so uh, we count, count people. There are eight or more people in our settlement, which I completely forgot about until I looked at Armored Strangers. Um, eight or more, destructive a action. The strangers finish their count and draw their blades. Roll on the table below. This 10 has already been used, so I'm gonna roll this one. <sighs> come on, come on 10, come on 10. Oh no, oh no. The Armored Strangers wantonly execute survivors, suffer minus five population. You may resist, to avoid the loss. Resist is add special to showdown the Kingsman level one to timeline this year. After the showdown, heal the returning survivors, then resume this year's settlement phase at the update death count step. Do not gain uh, uh, endeavors, or yeah, endeavors, draw a settlement event card, or advance the lantern year. Oh man. So here's, here's the problem. So if we resist right now, we will face a level one Kingsman right now. We'll probably wipe, get four survivors down. Then in one, two, three on Lantern Year Nine, we're gonna get Nemesis Encounter level one Kingsman, but it'll now be a level two Kingsman, so we already faced a level one Kingsman. Well, maybe not. So it says, Nemesis Encounter, Kingsman level one. It doesn't say Nemesis Encounter Kingsman, but this is a custom sheet. Let me look at the default sheets here. Hold on just a second. Okay. It does say Nemesis Encounter, Kingsman level one, but I think we always face, let's look at the showdown Kingsman real quick. The 
parting survivors do not have a hunt phase. Instead, select the Kingsman monster level. It should be one greater than the last Kingsman encounter and set the showdown accordingly. So even though so the settlement um, card says level one Kingsman, at Lantern Year 9, we'll now face a level two Kingsman. We're already behind. I've never once defeated a Kingsman. Never once. I don't know why. I have never done it. Um, so the problem is we're three years too early already one, two, three, four years too early already, technically, to face a Kingsman. Um, but we're facing him now, and then just a few years later, we're going to face him again, and that's going to do eight. Um, I'm tempted to do minus five population. Oh, man, I mean... So we are... We are at uh, population 11 right now, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Who are we missing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we're at eleven populations. So if we move five, we'll be down to six. We'll be down to seven no matter what, because I don't, I don't think it's possible. I, I would not be able to do it. I don't think uh, defeat a Kingsman right now. So, yeah, I think we're going to lose minus five population because we do not have a chance. So we'd lose four population if we resisted right now. But then the problem is we then in a few years do a level two Kingsman and we have zero chance at that, I think. So, um, and then so that'd be eight total. At least we have a chance in a few years. We'll face a level one Kingsman. There's a possibility that we might make it. So... Let's do minus five population. Oh no. So let's let's get rid of the people that have used their rerolls and have the least hunt XP. So so we're gonna we're gonna keep six people. So let's get all of our people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we haven't built one for MF, so let's. Let's go ahead and kill Emeth right now. Um, so that's one. Armored strangers. Okay. So that's one down. Um, Corin is pretty good. McGreedy is new. Drinian is new. Burn. Burn has that analyze, which is good, but he is a maybe. Quinn. Oh man, she's got the red fist. She's definitely a keeper. Lucy's definitely a keeper. Mrs. Beaver. We don't have enough. Oh yeah, so Helen and Cornelius. They have they are noobs as well. Okay. So Jadis we want to keep. Mrs. Beaver we want to keep. Okay, so let's keep Burn. And then we're gonna lose. Oh man, we're still gonna lose Cornelius. Cornelius is gone. Helen is gone. Drinian is gone. And we're on Lantern Year, what, six now these days? Drinian's gone. And McCready is gone. So we went from 11 to 6. All right, so we have right now, we have Burn, Mrs. Beaver, Jadis, Lucy, Quinn, and Corin. Those are our six. Boy, that is not fantastic. So Burn, 
Burn comes back and he's like, guys, I made it. That was the worst possible situation ever. When I got taken by the Spidicules, I was gone forever. I thought I was dead. Oh, thank God I'm back here. And then these armored strangers show up and they're like, Hah! hack half the population. Amazing. Awesome. Um, okay, well, we're not done yet because now we trigger Here's all of our good people. Now we trigger a parade of ghosts. So hopefully this isn't horrible. So here we go. Ready? A parade of ghosts. Past the velvet curtain of inky blackness covering the world, past the inevitability of death, there lies a young girl, ostracized for her unique perspective. Nominate a female survivor with less than two hunt XP. Um, well, that's a problem because I don't think we have one. Oh, Quinn, I guess. Yep. So that's the only one we can do. We, so we have, boy, so we have, so we have two males, four females. I should have looked at that. Um, that's okay. Okay, Quinn is our nominated survivor. They gain two hunt XP. Okay. They, so they age. Um, what else do they get? Um, she gains two understanding. Let's trigger age real quick before we forget. I think that's how it's supposed to work. All right, so let's roll 2d10. 9, 13, random fighting art. <coughs> 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 Excuse me. And she has red fist too. Let's hopefully nothing bad happens to her. Here we go. Orator of Death. Once per showdown, you may spend an activation to have all non-death survivors gain plus two insanity. When you die, you encourage. Okay. Orator of Death. Activation. All non-death. Plus two insanity. Okay, cool. And then on, oh, if I die, we encourage the survivors with our last words. So, okay. All right, so age is done. All right, and then we continue. Uh, we gain the morbid curiosity disorder, which I think we've gotten before with somebody else. Morbid curiosity, here it is. Your thirst for knowledge is unquenchable. You must investigate. Okay, so there's that. All right, now we continue. <clears throat> Every so often, a lantern in the horde would be snuffed by some unseen force. The snuffing of the lanterns was a curious event for the girl, and she dedicated much time to admiring the great pro uh, protector of her settlement alone. One year, when the light was extinguished, the girl noticed that it was not extinguished at all, but had drifted off into the darkness. As she peered past the inky veil at the edge of the settlement, she could see the pale light of a lantern. Oh no. Then another lantern, and another, and another, until the sky was blanketed in soft ghostly lanterns. The soft lights illuminated the settlement with a foreign light, waking its sleeping denizens. Panic descended upon the settlers as the nature of these floating lanterns was foreign to them. If the settlement has the cannibalized death principle, gain one random drifter night resource as the survivors catch and devour the floating lanterns. Okay. Um, I have a question real quick. Okay, never mind. So we have cannibalized, so we get a random drifter night resource. So let me go pull the drifter night cards. Okay, here we go. So here's our drifter night resources. This is the first time I've ever even looked at them, so we'll find out. So we get one random Drifter Knight resource. Here we go. Oops. The exquisite fabric. Hide a silk. One look, and it puts you right in. Exquisite fabric. That actually might be really handy. I'm going to have to relook at what I was going to build, so okay. Good. 
But the girl, as curious as she was wise, studied these floating lanterns and listened. They sung to her of a very quiet, very lonely girl living in the darkness, a girl who needed a friend. Uh, you may now hunt the Drifter Knight. Add it to the query list. Cool. Fun. Yay. Uh, okay. Uh, yay. Awesome. Oh, okay. Um, I think that's it. Oh, sweet. I know what I'm doing next year. I'm going to hunt some, meet some Drifter Knight. Uh, that's for sure. Because uh, I really want to try that out. I've been waiting. Quinn is awesome now, which is great. Okay, we're to six population, though. Man, maybe we shouldn't do the Drifter Night right away. I'm a little afraid of it. Um, I've never fought the Drifter Night before. I know zero about the Drifter Night. So the problem is, we're at six population. If we fight the Drifter Night now, um, we if we fail, which we're prone to do because Kingdom Death is ruthless and we only survive by knowing what to do, um, we could be up shit creek. Um, uh, I'll think about it. Let, let's see what happens during the rest of the settlement phase and we'll go from there. So, okay. So let's look at Silk Mill real quick. Um, dropped half my cards. So I need, for the Silk Boots, I need silk and large appendages, which I have large appendages, and now with this exquisite fabric, I have a hide or a silk. So I think, I think, so what, so what I was planning on doing is uh, with a silk mill, I was gonna use the uh, exoskeleton, two web silks, and the chitin as a hide to build the silk robes. And I think now I'm gonna build the silk boots as well. So I'm going to use the large appendage and the exquisite fabric for the silk boots. I don't know anything about this armor, nothing at all. So um, like I, I kind of like just being like, we're going to build it and we'll see what happens. So um, silk boots, which uh, the silk robes is three armor, which is amazing. Um, the silk boots is three armor as well. If we have two... Uh, green affinities, we get plus one movement once per round. You may spend one survival to gain plus two insanity. So that's cool. Okay, so we have the silk robes and the silk boots now. <clears throat> Let's put that there from the silk mill. Uh, we're going to spend monster organ, monster hide, and monster bone and uh, endeavor to innovate. So we get to draw, I believe, with Symposium. When a survivor innovates, draw additional two innovation cards. So we get to draw four innovation cards and pick between them, which we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven innovation cards. So uh, hopefully we'll get the Surge. Which I can't remember what that is. All right, here we go. Ready? So we get Pictograph, Inner Lantern, Sculpture, and face painting. So I believe Inner Lantern is the Surge. Let's look. So face painting. We can do some stuff. Uh, sculpture. <coughs> we can create statues. Inner Lantern, we can Surge. Pictograph, we can run away from a battle. Um, I think we're going to do Inner Lantern. I think this one's an easy one to pick. So we can now Surge, which is amazing. Yay. Okay. Uh, then, I think, uh, so we're going to put the spinnerets, the broken lantern, and the serrated fangs in storage. Uh, the only other thing to do is we have three endeavors left, and I think we're going to augury with those three endeavors. So let's spend one, aug let's spend one endeavor. We're going to augury. Four. Gain plus one survival. Uh, let's have Huynh gain plus one survival. Huynh's at two. All right, we're gonna use another endeavor. Three. Uh, we can lose a resource and get an understanding. We're not gonna do that. 
Our last endeavor. Come on, please. Just a second. Nine. Intimacy. Awesome. So let me, let me pick who I want to do. Pull that up. Be right back. Boy, I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, so we're going to pick Corin and Mrs. Beaver. Um, <clears throat> those are the, the worst of our, of our survivors. So we're going to roll 2d10. Take the lesser of two because survival of the fittest. Take this out of the way. Come on, please. Two. The female survivor perishes. So we're gonna have uh, Mrs. We're gonna have Mrs. Beaver use her reroll. She's gonna reroll the two. Five. That's enough. A new survivor is brought kicking and screaming into the world. The child's eyes are free of the ink that stain the founder's faces. Survivor gains plus one population. And the settlement gains plus one population. Good. Okay, so we need more male. So it's going to be a male engineer. Six. And we're going to name this male. Kenneth okay, is done. Janine is done. Did I do Cornelius yet? Cornelius, yep. Okay. Uh, let's do Gumpus, Governor Gumpus. So Gumpus. That's a fun name. Gumpus. Gumpus has been born. Lantern year six. Um, so I'll add their character sheet. Whew. I'd use a reroll, but we gain plus one population. So we're now at population seven. So if we lose four to the Drifter Knight, that gives us three. Um, can we face Spidicules or a white line with three survivors? It'd be tight. It would be tight. Um, but I really want to try the Drifter Knight out. So I think, I think next year we're gonna fight the Drifter Knight. Uh, I, like I really want to get into the, I really want to get into the new content. Um, the CCG stuff looks really fun, and I've been. I've been really wanting to get into it, so I, I've waited long enough. I, I think that no matter what, win or lose, we're gonna do the Drifter Line next year. So uh, that's it for this episode. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Note, minus five population. We have cannibalized. They died, right? Minus five population. So we forgot to pull resources. So let's do that real quick. Here we go. Monster organ, monster hide, Monster hide, monster organ, and whatever we want. Cool. Okay, so I don't think I'm gonna build anything. I think we're gonna go out as is. Um, I'll look over it and I'll let you guys know next episode if I decide to build anything out of these. But for now, we'll just put them into storage um, and we'll go from there. Sorry, thanks again. Okay, I take that back. Uh, I know what I'm gonna use it for. So I'm gonna use monster hide, monster hide, and whatever. It's, I'm gonna turn it to three hide. I'm gonna do rawhide headband, rawhide vest, and rawhide gloves. That gives me plus one survival um, when we depart, plus one evasion, and I can do rawhide headband. That gives us a little bit of armor on a, a third person. It's not a complete rawhide armor set, but it's close. Um, and then the monster or the two monster organs, I'll put those back in storage uh, for now. So, okay, now I'm done.